Okie dokie. Artichokey. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tony Young. I'm the founder and executive director of Community Education Group. Um, Amanda, you can take the slides down for a second, and I'm going to talk about the Appalachian, Part Appalachian Partnership Fund, uh, but I want to kind of see people and talk to people uh, for a little bit before. So uh, as some of you, many of you know, uh, Community Education Group was able to receive funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the amount of $3.5 million. Uh, this is one year's worth of funding. It is supposed to be and is designed to be a pilot initiative that will launch in West Virginia and then will move on to Appalachia and we hope across rural America in year three. Uh, we had expected that the uh, resources would be greater uh, but they are not. <laughs> well, where we are right now is that we are at, uh, we received, as I said earlier, $3.5 million. And our goal is to re-grant or put back out in the street 1 million of those dollars. And one of the ways that we wanted to do that is to develop a uh, Appalachian Partnership Fund. For year one, uh, these resources will be available and open to organizations and institutions that are in West Virginia. Uh, and what you want to start the, go ahead and start the slideshow. I know that was like two minutes worth of nothing that you could have probably left the slides up there for. Um, but everybody, I says, I, I will not be on camera. I, who's that? Catherine. Okay, it's okay, Catherine. You don't have to be on camera. I won't, I won't shame you about the camera thing. I only do that on the West Virginia Stakeholder Meeting. Um, so what we're calling this is the Appalachian Partnership Fund. Again, because years two and three are supposed to be broader than just West Virginia. But for this year, we're focused in on West Virginia. Next slide, please. And what we wanted to do is, is that we wanted to have two stages of grants. We wanted to have event grants and outreach grants. The reason that we wanted to do this is that, you know, one of the things that CEG does, and one of the things I'm committed to as a as the leader of CEG, as the executive director of CEG, is that as we get resources that we can bring to the state, it's never our money. It's state money. It's money that we want to share with our partners, figure out how we can support our partners uh, to get efforts done. So that's why we wanted to create this fund to begin with, right? Uh, is that so the events are if you if you want to do a COVID testing event or uh, you want to do an influenza event or or you want to do an HIV or Hep C or other type of event, uh, what you can do is that through this fund is that you can request. $500 to $2,500 just for the event, right? And this really is designed more for uh, community-based organizations. That would be HIV organizations. It might be an MAT facility. It might be a food and nutrition program. It might be a food bank. But really here, what you need to do is that you just need money to buy punch of cookies. Uh, you need to buy some advertisement. You need to print some flyers, that sort of thing. This kind of event, you would then, there'll be a form. And what you'll be able to tell us in that form is, oh, I need for you to bring everybody. I need you to bring the, the people that will vaccinate uh, for COVID, that will test for COVID. I only want to do a testing event for COVID. I don't want to do a vaccination event for COVID. I would like to do testing HIV, uh, viral hepatitis, and substance use disorder at my event. So I need you to bring enough people that they can implement those services, right? And so you might also need a bigger grant, $10,000, $50,000 grant, which funds more of a long-term program that you are actually going to do these things. You are going to do COVID vaccination. You are going to do uh, COVID testing. You're going to do HIV screening. You're going to do all these things. And you need us to be able to just support you either with a part-time person, maybe. Maybe you need, uh, again, some more materials. You need PPE. You need test kits to do this. You need some training. You can get any number of things in both of these categories. And really, there's a lot of flexibility. The most important thing is, is that what we've suggested to the Centers for Disease Control is that we are in the middle of a what we like to call a syndemic in the middle of the pandemic. 
So we want to address HIV, Hep C, and viral hepatitis. But what we know is, is that we've also got to address COVID and influenza. We think that this, this next flu season is going to have a huge impact. So maybe you want to just do say, hey, I want to do a flu vaccination event. So we'll work. if you don't have flu vaccine at your site, we'll work with you to identify one of our partners who may have a tranche of flu vaccine and the personnel that can come in and do a big flu event for you. Next slide. Right? So these are all the kind of the things that you can do. COVID testing, COVID vaccination, influenza vaccination, HIV rapid testing, hepatitis C rapid testing, linkage to care and treatment. Maybe you say, you know what? We've got all these people and they're reactive for either HIV or they're reactive for COVID. We need to figure out how to get them to the care provider that they need to go to. We can help you figure that out with some program resources as well. Our goal really is to do a couple of things with this fund. Identify partners who are in the community who do the work who may not have the resources to get more of that work done. What we also want to do is make sure that we're getting people tested for COVID, getting folks vaccinated for COVID, getting folks vaccinated for the flu. And what we know is, is that we can't put our hands on every single person, but maybe you can. Maybe you can put on, put your hands on people in your social network, your information sharing network, your client pool, your neighborhood, your community. Maybe it's like, oh, you know, I know this church. They would really host an event, but they don't have any money to host an event. Then they should help us by helping them by participating in the fund. Next slide, please. Right. So here are the things that you should probably really think. Are you already registered uh, to store and or transport COVID vaccine? That would be also, you'd be a good person. Maybe you have a few dollars that you, if a couple of more bucks would help you, you call us and say, hey, if we had a couple more dollars, maybe we could lease a vehicle for a couple of months that, and get us out in the field. That would help us. Uh, maybe you say, well, you know what? Maybe we want to do some diversity education and training of our providers or of our staff. You can do that also. You can say, uh, do you have relationships uh, that you feel like maybe we could develop if we did focus groups or if we got, we did some outreach, we did some education? And right, can you also? do some reporting because we're going to need to know how many people walked up to you to get a COVID test, how many people uh, were able to get vaccinated for the flu, how many people were able to get an HIV test, how many people were offered a test and said, no, I don't want one. So those are the kind of little data elements that we are going to want to collect. We'll have a form for you. We're looking at two different methods. Uh, you'll be able to do it by paper, but you'll also be able to do it online on a tablet or on your phone. It'll be pretty easy. We don't want to make this like a big reporting thing. I think that, you know, we have a couple of grants and one of them is like, I feel like we're writing a report every two weeks rather than actually doing the work. We want you guys to do, be able to do the work with a little bit of assistance. Next slide, please. Right. Again, here's some of the things that you can uh, uh, support here. If you, need, if you need to pay part of a registered nurse, you maybe need to part, uh, pay for part of a medical assistant that's gonna help at some of these events. Maybe you need more testing supplies. Maybe you need more PPE. Maybe you need just some giveaways. You need some collateral items. You need some just, like I said, basic event support, punch of cookies. Um, you know, again, you need some reporting support. You need somebody to come in and help you with data collection. You know, we have a robust evaluation team on board now. Maybe you need those guys to come. We also have a, another evaluation consultant. Maybe that's what you need. And we can help you figure that all out. Next slide. There we go. So we're going to start this process November 1st. That's when it'll open. And it will be, we'll, stay, we'll keep it open until we go broke. That is a first come, first serve uh, plan. We will keep it open. We, like I said, there's a million dollars in there. We have two uh, other partners that we're working with. We're going to be rolling those out later on, but it'll be really simple. It's going to be some basic organizational information, project narrative. What does that mean? Tell us what you want to do. This is not like heavy. You're not writing a federal grant. You're not writing a state grant. It's really going to be less than a paragraph or maybe a paragraph and a half. You're going to give us a little bit of a budget. 
what are you going to spend my 500 bucks on? If it's punching cookies, I'm going to spend $500 on punching cookies. You'll give me a couple of receipts and we'll, everybody will be good. And that's a budget justification is I'm going to spend $500 uh, and the $500 is $200 will go to punch, $200 will go to cookies and a hundred dollars will go to napkins to catch the punch and cookies and to get the stuff that everybody spills. Um, so next slide, right? So CEG is prioritizing needs of, like I said, events, outreach events and critically underserved populations, outreach events and that reach uh, priority population. Priority populations meaning this, we're looking at people who are homeless, marginally housed, uh, people impacted by substance use disorder, people living with HIV, people living with viral hepatitis, uh, people, you know, really is everybody, it's, it's everybody in your social network. It might be churches, it might be uh, folks that are of color, it might be, it could be anybody. You, if that, pro, that population is a priority to you, they're a priority to us, right? And so, and then, so if you've already received money, from the Centers for Disease Control, we can't give you any money. So we just want you to know that. But if you're receiving money from the state, you should probably call us. If you're not receiving any money from anybody, cool. If you're not, if you think that maybe, hey, I want to receive mo your money, but I'm not sure if I'm getting money from CDC or if I'm getting money from somewhere that I'm not sure, just ask us a question. And that's because this is not meant to be hard. And this is not meant to not get you money. You know, some grants are written so you don't get the money. It says, I need to share this information with our team. Will you send a link of this recording? And that is from, I can't, oh man, that, that clicked off too fast. Who said it? It was, uh, hang on, Sharon Lansdale, is that Lansdale? I don't have my reading glasses on. And they have instructed me that I'm never supposed to do these calls without my reading glasses because I cannot read the chat without my reading glasses. Um, but yeah, Sharon, we will send it out. And if you would like, we will also uh, send uh, the slides to anyone who's here. And I think we're going to be creating a page on our website for this. And that'll be up uh, on or before uh, November 1st. Uh, but yes, we will send this all out. Next slide. The Partnership Fund and Community Education Group is where you will send your questions uh, and where they will get answered. It is where you will also send your uh, application when it is ready. Uh, and with that, Amanda, you can stop the slides and let's ask, see if people have questions. And, you know, if those of you who have participated uh, in the uh, West Virginia Stakeholder Coalition meetings, know that I'll, I'll call on people randomly. And so if you have questions, you should ask them before I start calling on people like uh, Chad Lusk. I guess Chad Lusk didn't have any questions. No, Tony, I don't have any questions right now. All right. Um, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to send that to an email to that address or feel free to email me personally. Uh, this is a really big deal to us, you know, putting a million dollars out on the street doesn't happen every day. We're very happy for, I'm proud of the opportunity to do so. Uh, so uh, again, I, I, I want to, I want to thank you all very much. That was like 15 minutes. I thought y'all were going to have a ton of questions. Uh, I mean, where the questions, no questions, everybody, hey. Everybody's just getting ready to write their grant. That's it. How you long? Made it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> How long will CEG take to respond to applications? Once we open up the portal on November first, we anticipate being able to get money out and get it to you in two weeks. That's our goal. A short turnaround because look. This is, this is all going to be hard stuff, and we're coming up on winter. If you've got an event, we want to be able to make sure that that event can happen. And, you know, if we, if we need to do more work, when I say do more work, meaning maybe you call, maybe your grant application says that you need to hire a nurse. Well, we got to figure out, is that nurse uh, registered in the state? Is that, I mean, is that nurse already on staff? Are we covering money that should have been covered by something else? Those are questions, inquiries that we'd have to make. 
Uh, we have to also, like I said, always make sure that we are not doing what is calling called supplanting CDC's money. That you're not getting money from CDC to do the exact same thing that we're giving you money to do. So we'd have to figure that out. As long as we can figure that out, it's easy peasy, hop a Louisi. So I'm with the FRN and I serve like three different counties here out in the Eastern Panhandle. And what I'm gonna do is I've already got a list in my head of who I'm shooting this over to. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is there gonna be a limit of services from one county? Or are you gonna say, well, this county got this many events and they probably, you know, or anything like that. Where where are you in where are you in the eastern panhandle? Jefferson, Morgan, and Berkeley. Yeah, see, so I mean that that's just it, right? So those are all so, in my opinion, they're all so different and in such great need, right? So I don't know that we could limit it. Like Morgan is very different than I think Berkeley and Jefferson. Jefferson is, you know, right there, popular, uh, lots of people. Well, people think of it as a place with lots of people. Very, and most people think of it as urban versus Morgan, which people think of as very, very rural. And, you know, Berkeley people just like it because I think it's Berkeley and they think it's Berkeley, California, and we have to explain to them that it's not. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, no. So, I mean, I don't see that we would say, oh, wait a minute, two organizations in Hardy County or two organizations in Berkeley got money and none in, in Upshur got any. Well, what we, our job is then to start reaching out to folks in Upshur County. That's our job. And so, I mean, I don't think we're going to get 25 applications from Jefferson County. I don't think we're going to get 25 applications from Berkeley Springs. I don't think we're going to get 25 from Morgan. If we got three or five, nine times out of 10, we probably are still in the range of what we could do. And it would depend on the amount, the amount of the award, right? If they're looking for 50, different than if they're looking for 2,500. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, listen. Amy Snodgrass, you have a question? You know what? I'm good. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited. We'll present it to the ARCOR partner. And especially, I'm thinking Minnie Hamilton off the top of my head. Okay. So Calhoun, Calhoun Gilmer. Yeah. Right. Perfect. That'd be awesome. great. We need yeah. outreach out there. Whenever you say Minnie Hamilton, I always think of Minnie Pearl. So I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that's the first thing that always pops in my head. And then I have to go, no, that's not that. The hat and the, yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I got to get, I got to get out more. No, this is great. I, I think it's terrific. So it's a great way to do it. And we're, we'll definitely be submitting one, especially in our rural areas. I mean, and that's the goal, right? The goal is yeah. like for, for, for you guys to submit one, but also to tell your friends about it, right? There's enough money where everybody can eat a little bit. Tell your friends, tell people that even aren't your friends. Okay. Maybe don't tell them. Maybe just email them. Don't tell them, just email them, even if they're not your friend. Just say, I saw this and this might be beneficial. And I'm trying to, you know, have a more of a mindfulness journey in my life. So I'm trying to help you with something positive, even though I don't particularly care for you. Maybe, maybe that's the email you send. You know, I mean, not that there's anybody you don't like, Amy. And in case anybody needs it, I did put a copy of the slides in the chat. I will get an email sent out to everybody who registered shortly after the meeting is over, and we'll make sure we get the recordings out to everybody, too. Perfect. If you have any questions, I think you all know my email. Uh, if you don't, go to the website, communityeducationgroup.org. You'll find my email there. Uh, or you can call Amanda and bother her if you feel like you want to bother her instead of bothering me. Uh, but, you know, feel free to bother us at any time. Kathy Slim, do you have a whole bunch of people that you could send this out to to make sure these people get this money? So that's what I was thinking about, Tony. <laughs> was who else? That's why I joined you here to see what who else I might think about using it. Um, I did have a question about, uh, you talked about um, making medical assistance and nursing staff available. What's the capacity and how would that work? 
Well, how it would work is that, that the individual organizations should have identified the person that they're looking at. And if it's that they say, well, you know what, our but we only have uh, $30,000 to pay for this nurse. Uh, but the truth is, is that we need a full-time nurse and we, and that's, it's going to cost us $60,000. So maybe they apply for 30,000 and say, can you augment or supplement the cost of our nursing team for a year or six months or however. So maybe it's that. So it's resources to hire professional staff. It's not, CEG is not hiring medical professionals to so make available. Right. Okay, Correct. that's what I was Correct. confused about. I, mean, I, I, wish, I wish I had a tranche of nurses sitting in my <laughs> living room uh, or, you know, in our storage shed that I could just like blow on them. And then all of a sudden they'd be like a whole bunch of nurses whole bunch of nursing personnel I'd be able to deploy. That Wouldn't that be the dream? Yeah, I just, that's what I wasn't clear about. Thanks. All right. Uh, Andrew Bell, can you send this out to all of your West Virginia people? I can indeed. Uh, look, at, look at you, look at you, look at you, look at you making me love you more than I already do. All right, I got nothing else. It's, this was easy peasy. Top of Louise, I guess. All right. Well, everybody have a great day. Let's really kind of launch this thing and let's spend all this, let's spend all the government's money. All right. Because it's our money. That's the other thing I think it's really important. This is y'all's money. This is not my money. This is y'all's money. Let's make sure we spend our money. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the week, and I look forward to hearing from you all very soon. Ciao, ciao.